Hey guys, Jessica again with another Parallax Project of the Week. This week we're going to make you smarter by creating a memory game using parts included in the What's a Microcontroller kit. All we're going to need is your basic stamp homework board or board of education, a bicolor LED, red and green LED, two push buttons, and various resistors. Let's get started. Did you know that recent studies have shown that by playing games that require a certain level of memory recall, it can help improve your ability to reason and solve new problems? In our game, a bicolor LED will emit random light patterns, and the player will have to replay that pattern using the two push buttons. But watch out! In order to make things more challenging, each time you progress in the game, the patterns will be displayed faster and faster. Full documentation and source code for this project can be found at forums.parallax.com, Stamps in Class, Stamps in Class Mini Projects, a bicolor LED memory game. Before continuing, use the schematic and wiring diagram included in the documentation to wire your board. As with most projects, the very first program that we're going to want to run will make sure that we've wired everything correctly. The program HardwareTest.bs2 will blink the bicolor LED and monitor the push button states. Verify that the bicolor LED first blinks red, then green, and also make sure that when you press the bottom push button, the debug terminal reports IN0 equals 1, and the red LED turns on. And when you push the top push button, make sure the green LED comes on and the debug terminal reports IN1 equals 1. If you run this program and don't get the desired results, here are a few common wiring mistakes that you can check. The first common error is LED polarity. If your bicolor LED blinks green then red, or if your red and green LEDs don't emit light when a button is pressed, try flipping the LEDs around to see if that fixes the problem. If you trimmed your LEDs like I did and can't tell which end is the cathode by the lengths of the leads, take a look at your LED from the top and find the flat edge. It's another way to tell which lead is the cathode. Since this is such a tight wiring job, the second thing to check is that none of the resistor leads are touching. If both LEDs are lighting up when you press one button, this could be the cause. Once everything is working as it should, you're ready to move on. Another thing that we'll want to check is that the bicolor LED emits random red-green patterns. The basic stamp's random command really only outputs pseudo-random numbers, which means that the number generated is based on a logical operation. So the first value, called the seed, if that's the same each time, the light pattern is going to be the same every time you play the game, which would not be very challenging. So what we'll have to do is find a way to make it more random so that the light pattern is different each time you play. The way we'll do this is to use the button command. This command monitors a push button and doesn't allow the code to move on until that button state changes. Since the player won't be able to accurately time when he or she presses the button, our results get more random. Therefore, the code will keep generating pseudo-random numbers until it detects a button press, and then moves on. Since the bicolor LED will only emit red or green light, we can look at a single bit of that random number generated, which will be either a 0 or a 1. And then we can display a color based on the value of that bit. Run random test.bs2 and verify that the bicolor LED emits random light patterns. Press the reset button a couple of times to be sure that each pattern is different. Now that we know our circuit is wired correctly and our bicolor LED emits random light patterns, we're ready to put everything together. Let's take a look at how our final program is structured. When you first turn the board on, the program is sent to the begin game subroutine, where the first color is displayed and stored to EEPROM. Then, in the check response subroutine, the program verifies that the button the player pressed corresponds to the color displayed. If the color matches, the program then replays the last color adds a new one, and then checks the user response again. This process repeats until the player messes up, in which case the debug terminal lets the player know they've lost and displays the highest level they've reached. And that's it! Keep playing to improve your memory and challenge your friends to see who can get to the highest level. I got to level 16. Can you beat that? Hey again. I'm standing here in our Parallax Purple Room, which is filled with really cool projects that people have created. Do you have any idea for a good project, but you're just not sure how to get started? Well, if you send your ideas into stamps and class at parallax.com, your project could be featured in a future Parallax Project of the Week. Seriously, send them in. Remember, there are no small projects, just small developers.